live. Good afternoon. This is 12 o'clock, a little after two, 12 central time here in Houston, Texas. Today's question is how long for NVC? How long does it take NVC to schedule your interview? That's another million dollar question and let's get down to it. Friends, welcome to Green Card Guys TV. I'm here. Uh, my name is John Ting. We're the immigration problem solvers. We try to solve as many immigration problems as possible and maybe even prevent it for you in the first place. And that's why we're here live sharing information uh, because, you know, there's some people who do certain things or don't do certain things and it becomes a problem. So, uh, but here today, I want to give you some, share some, I guess you could say some data points, especially related to and waiting for your visa interview. And there's, there's many problems when, especially regard to consular processing, which means you're just essentially waiting for your visa whether it's immigrant visa or non-immigrant visa and you're outside the United States. Now, uh, just in case you have not um, watched any of our videos or you forgot how to contact us, our number is 720-740-4247. Uh, we're based in Houston, Texas. We have an office there. And uh, yeah, you can go to our website, greencardguys.com or uh, freevisaquiz.com if you just want to answer a couple questions and we can help uh, point you in the right direction. Uh, yes, we do help with citizenship and uh, for resident holders, for green card holders. Absolutely. We'll, we'll let you know uh, the timing of eligibility. We'll happy to take a look at it. Uh, let's see here. So, of course, you're welcome to ask a question. You can post it or type it in the comment section, and I'll try to get to it as soon as I can right after answering the uh, topic of the day, the question of the day. How long does it take for NVC, National Visa Center, to schedule your interview? And as lo most lawyers will respond to a question, like, uh, is it depends. In this scenario, it depends on the consulate or embassy because essentially because of the pandemic and everything, and of course, less personnel working at each post, um, they don't, the National Visa Center doesn't just uh, documentary qualify and then just send it to the uh, particular post. What they did, what they do is they documentary qualify it after you upload all those documents, mostly financial related and a police certificate to clear your record or to show your record. Uh, it could be sitting there for a couple of months, maybe six months. Um, fortunately, we haven't seen it. Uh, our case experience has not been as long as six months. Uh, even some one we have in South Africa that just got uh, documentary qualified and maybe three weeks later got scheduled for an interview. So that was Johannesburg, South Africa is one example. But yeah, it just depends. Like if you're talking about Islamabad and Pakistan, it's definitely going to take a lot longer. But that's just one issue the government has. Another one that's more of a concern is actually, let's say you have the interview and then... Um, then you're still waiting after that for the actual visa. Sometimes you could be waiting two months, six months, uh, but it just depends on the consulate, okay? In general, worldwide, most people don't have to wait that long, but, um, you know, some people will say, oh, I got this 221G and my case is stuck. Of course, many people respond to it, provide those documents requested or the DS-5535 the same day or the next day. And they still don't give you an update what's going on. So you don't want to bug them too much, but you at least once a month, you can submit an inquiry. Now, if they told you in advance, oh, wait 90 days, wait 60 days, because they have to go do what they claim to do, background security check, which is frustrating. You would think they just do that beforehand. So uh, they're not that organized, okay? But we do file lawsuits. Uh, in many different scenarios, but including that, if you're outside America waiting, okay, we do, uh, just depends on the timing. Not every situation we can help with. We'll let you know, but the best way is you can ask down here below in the comments section, um, ask me here, or you can schedule a consultation. By the way, if you do fill out the form, it's not an automatic cons uh, consultation because it is no cost to you, but we have limited time, so... Our CARES team, they're not lawyers, but our CARES team will call you within 24 hours of a business day and see if, <clears throat> you know, we train them every day, essentially. They'll see if uh, you're qualified for it. Essentially, if there's a way we can help you, 
then you'll, you'll likely get scheduled, okay? Uh, let's see here. Someone said, Steve said, I wish you had you had pork fried rice and egg rolls. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm hungry, honestly. I'll eat any, any uh, I'm open to anything tasty. Okay, let's see. Uh, OB, does it matter that you're in New York State? No, we handle cases all over all over the country and also all over the world, of course. Uh, especially, I've been doing, having like remote remote meetings, essentially like video conference. I mean, Skype existed before Zoom. So I've been doing this before the uh, pandemic. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we handle complex issues, but we also handle straightforward cases. And sometimes... Sometimes some people think it's straightforward, but then they either delay filing the case. Um, so we help our law firm. We keep help keep track. We have three different service plans. Uh, the max plan is we file your case in 30 days, pro plan 60 days, and light plan 90 days. It just depends on your budget. Uh, just depends what you want. So OB, if you want to, you want to talk with one of us, our premier attorneys, or myself, um, go to our website, greencardguys.com. It's the, one of the best ways. To, and after you fill out that answer a couple of questions, it will take you to the next page of self-schedule. Okay, so we really make it easy. And it's Monday through Friday availability. Usually in a, usually like, uh, we usually have consultations usually like 9 a.m. to 1 or 2 p.m. Central Time. Exactly, OB, that's, that's right. Yeah, it just depends. Some people are, some people don't work, so they have some time. Uh, some are, are busy, so we're happy to help. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so uh, I got the other thing to know is um, there's a recent situation. So aside from this topic, but yeah, if anyone has questions in general, you're welcome to post in the comment section. But in um, we've been able to get some interviews scheduled much more quickly, I guess you could say. Uh, one, we, we requested an expert request because, uh, unfortunately, the uh, U.S. citizen petitioner, the spouse, had some, um, they gave, she gave birth, but there were some complications after the fact. So um, that was a good, valid reason. Medical concerns was a valid reason to share with National Visa Center, which also could be shared with USCIS. So we submitted expert requests for both, and that was for Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, so we definitely got that uh, going. It was scheduled maybe about one or two weeks after our request. So it's not a guarantee, but it's worth a shot. You know, if they allow that right now. So it's just one other way for the government to, I guess you could say, prioritize cases. But if you don't ask, you don't know. All right. If you get denied the re expert request, doesn't mean they're going to put you even further back. That's not... <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. Joseph, am I a lawyer? Yes. I don't always dress like a lawyer. I'm in a polo right now, but yes, I'm an attorney. I'm licensed in Texas. Thanks for asking. Uh, let's see here. Um, there's been some scenarios, people coming up, and uh, for example, that, that someone said that <clears throat> person got detained, for example, uh, likely because there's some kind of criminal issue, which some people forget, but drinking and driving is a crime in all 50 states of America. And even if you have one beer, two beers, you know, alcohol affects people different size, body sizes, could affect someone much sooner than others. So but these days, it's easier to say now, but use Uber, use Lyft, or your regular local taxi company when you're when you're drinking and uh before you go out and drive it's just not worth it okay so we had a scenario someone called and i can share this with you because it's not i'm not saying anyone's specific name or the location uh but basically yeah they got detained and they're now in ice custody and that person is a resident no um in a situation where you're not eligible to become a citizen quite yet right and this person would have to file after five years in general after getting resident status, but his spouse doesn't have any status. So it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, you might think, well, shouldn't the focus be on him only because he's detained? Yes. But in the situation, we really think 
far out in the future if possible, if for some reason he was order removed, at least before he gets order removed, we start the process for filing petition for on behalf for his wife. Because with court cases in general, there's thousands of cases ac across America in these courts. It could take a long time. So in the meantime, might as well file for a petition on behalf of his wife because she doesn't have any status. So in the event in the future that uh, the husband who is resident right now gets order removed, then who knows? Maybe she could, if she gets status in, just in time, then she can file for him in the future. So it's kind of like full circle. All right. So that just came across our desk a couple of days ago. So that normally does, it's not, that's not often the case, but because usually the person who, uh, that we have to help has no status, but this person has, um, uh, this person has uh, what do you call it? Uh, resident status. <clears throat> so one thing we look at is uh, 42B cancellation removal for non-legal permanent residents. Um, and of course, making sure they, they've been living here for a certain amount of time. You like my decorations? Thanks. Yeah, I got the Obama book behind me. Yeah, a couple other things. The U.S. flag somewhere. <clears throat> I'm blocking it, but I got the world map behind me. Let's see. I might be missing some. Ziggy, you say you always see me coming up on your 4FYP page but never on my face. I don't know what that means. Alu V, uh, your husband just got a citizenship. Congratulations. What's the next step? You have your permanent resident case pending. Okay. Well, uh, oh, I see, because they don't know. So I, I, I would mail a cover letter with a copy, copy, not the original, a copy of the naturalization certificate, because if for some reason, God forbid, that you mail out the original certificate and they lose it, you're going to have to pay USCIS again, uh, another form to get another original. So you don't want to send the original. A copy is sufficient. But then you yeah, just update them in the cover letter that he um, he's now a citizen. I would also send an approval notice of the N-400, a copy of it. Always scan, always scan it, okay, before you send it. Okay, I just had to report someone because this guy is kind of ridiculous. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah, there's someone saying, okay, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Can you submit it online? Alu, what was your original question? No, unfortunately, you can't. You can't let them know online. I wish that were the case. <laughs> that would be a lot faster. That'd be great. But no, can't do that. You got to mail it in. Um, man, y'all are funny. Some people I don't have answers to some of your questions. If it's not immigration related, I'm sorry. <clears throat> What company could double their price and still keep you as a customer? I don't know what you're saying. Um, but, yeah, we have increased our prices in general every year since I've been a lawyer. Uh, really because we provide customer service. We've been more intentional. More and more intentional. We have retreats every quarter with our team to get feedback from each team member to see how we can improve our services. Um, but, yeah, there's other law firms that have different, you know, different pricing if if that's, of course, a main concern for most people. Uh, let's see here. Someone asks, you want someone asks, you want an Australian passport? You have a USA passport? What's the quickest way? I have no idea. We only handle inbound uh, immigration, not outbound. I'm not sure about your um, how to answer your question other than that. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, see some questions on YouTube. Robin says, recently got... Uh, Bonafide, I think you mean bonafide um, determination from UV for your visa for four years. Uh, but when you went to renew your DL driver license uh, with your EAD, they only give you one year. Wasn't it supposed to be valid till my new bonafide EAD expires. You're confused. Yeah, I think that's more of a state issue. 
they don't I don't think they have to give you four years just because it says it. it, it I think it depends on the state and their rules essentially. But I mean, yeah, in general, at least in Texas, I've I've seen that if, uh, if the resident card is valid for ten years, then they give the travel license. Actually, that, again, yeah, that has nothing to do about whatever immigration is. It's a state. It's a state rule situation. Okay, go look, Robin. So check your state. Department Homeland. No, wait. Department Motor Vehicle or Department of Public Safety. Okay, Marlon, blessings to you. Thanks for joining. Good to see you. Uh, you ask if a person gets married in the U.S., they go back and consular. Will it affect the chance of immigrant visa? I think you're talking about yourself. I think you have a consular case, if I recall. Um, <clears throat> depends if you need a waiver or not. Did you overstay your visa? You don't have to share online here, of course. Um but yeah, hopefully you didn't overstay your visa before and uh, you don't need a waiver. But if you did overstay by over 180 days at least, but less than 365 days, then that's a three-year bar. Uh, but if you overstay by more than one year in America, then you, and you left, then that triggers a 10-year bar. So either way, you need to file for a waiver after the visa interview, after they officially determine that you're in, a person is inadmissible. Don't know your situation, Marlon specifically but hopefully you did not um you did not trigger the unlawful presence bar all righty by the way folks if you enjoy the way sh we the way we share content if you don't mind on tiktok just tap the screen very easy or on instagram and youtube just cl click the like button in the hearts okay marlon great glad to hear no overstay but yeah if you in general if you've just been in the u.s before during your authorized period uh, that that doesn't affect you, okay? But they will ask on a DS-260 form, all prior entries, okay? Ricardo, Ricardo, you're a derivative of your parents' case, I-140. You got a pending 45 right now will, and will be approved, or I think you're asking, will it be approved before, because you're not Indian-born, they are Indian national, Um on the row, the PD is current, but not for India. So yeah, it relies on your, on your, uh, your parents, whoever is the principal applicant. You know, rely on on that person. Okay, um, let's see. But if you have more questions about that, welcome to join. It's uh, it's chart. So as far as I know, it's chart B. But you want to make sure you want to check the USCS website. Let me see if I can find it for you. Let's see. The USCS has a website that tells you exactly which one to use. And it can change from time to time. So it's, I don't like, honestly, don't like sharing it necessarily, but usually chart B. Oh, wait, you're in the US, right? So yeah, check out this page right here. Because I did update several months ago about folks who are in the US. It, it can be confusing, but yeah. Yeah, it says for employee-based, you want to use final action date chart. So that's chart A. Okay, yeah, stay tuned for that one. There was, in general, retrogression the past couple of months, Visa Bulletin. Go to the U.S. and see the belly. Interesting. All right, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> All right, well, hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, I uh, just want to recap some problems that we've we've uh, received that some people have mentioned is, <clears throat> yeah, they've uh, they filed their case with or without a lawyer and the 485 application is still pending. And it could have been one year, two years. And then, um, yeah, they the officer... Uh, told them, I think one in one scenario, the officer told them that they had to recommend them to withdraw their application. Uh, that's not so much a problem. The problem is about, for example, if especially if you have a case in a uh, that's a country where there's so many different ways to get divorced, for example, like one example is in Nigeria, there's so many different ways to get divorced, so it can confuse. USCIS, and actually, you want to rely on the uh, the State Department website. They have a table 
You just click for your specific country, and they have a list of entities, essentially, um, government offices that can provide, that they recognize the divorce order, for example. Uh, because in Nigeria, for example, there are several ways to get married, but also to get divorced. Um, and I know with the SARS protest a couple years ago, uh, there was you know fires in government buildings, so that affected the ability for uh, getting the accurate information. And so come to find out, there could be, and you wouldn't know, maybe the government office in Nigeria that issues out these divorce certificates, um, the clerk maybe put the wrong number, the wrong case number. So if, if somehow the USCIS is able to check that and they see, oh, this one doesn't pop up in the online system or you they called in and didn't pop up, that's a problem, right? But USCIS is not going to do the investigation, further investigation on your behalf to see if there's a way to help you, right? So you have to stay on top of it. If you hear in the news that your particular country has issues like that, like a protest, and they've put, you know, what do you call that? Um, committed, there's arson going on. There's fire in government buildings. You want to double check that. I mean, arson was just an extra extra unfortunate situation but you know even clerks could get things wrong that happens in the u.s well, i had to help fix a client's uh, criminal uh document and it come, when i researched it online it was a wrong crime it was a wrong classification it was supposed to be class b misdemeanor but they had it class a so that's an extra due diligence that we do on our side for example but if you're filing on your own you want to make sure that your decree has is legit and it probably is 99.9% .9 of it, but maybe the case number is wrong. So you just want to make sure, because I know a lot of y'all have to depend on a lawyer or another professional service in your country. So you just you may just assume that whatever they give you is correct. But before you file your case you just, with USCIS, you just want to make sure, because, yeah, we have several people that get denied and they claim, okay, you misrepresented to USCIS for immigration benefit, meaning the green card. And then you have to file a waiver. Uh, so one of the, uh, someone that hired us after the fact, you know, their waiver got denied. And, um, you yeah, unfortunately, when you file a waiver application, 601A or 601, you need to admit that you did something wrong. And I know it's difficult for people to do that when in this situation, they didn't do anything wrong. They did not intentionally misrepresent the government or lie. Or uh, so essentially, yeah, so we have to refile uh, file 290B, motion to reconsider, motion to reopen, but also um, we're considering to refile the entire case because 290B, by the way, there is no processing timetable, okay? There's no timetable on that online, on the USCS.gov website. So <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that's, um, so you want to, so that's why you may want to consider refiling 485 in general if you're in this kind of situation. But hopefully you don't have to um, be that in a situation, okay? Kelly, for real, let's see. One is likely the NVC will send out uh, IL for this month for spouse visa. One is likely the date the NVC will send out the IL for, okay. I was just repeating your question because you, it looks like you wrote it twice. Um, mean I, IV, the immigrant visa? Uh, it depends. Did you have the interview already? It just depends what stage your case is, essentially. Ricardo, this is a kind of situation on YouTube. Ricardo, this kind of situation, you may want to schedule a consultation because, um, yeah, that's just you're, – you're, you're a derivative. The short answer, you're a derivative of your parents' case. So it's highly unlikely that um, – USCIS would would process adjudicate meaning process for decision without having process your dad's case first. So I know it's frustrating. Um, let's see. Alrighty, I didn't realize I was blocking half my face. Um, Alrighty, well today's Friday, folks, and I'm almost to twelve thirty. I gotta get to my next meeting for the team and and train them, of course, to help you answer your questions. All right, keep in mind, if you do give us a call, we appreciate it, uh, but you're not guaranteed a consultation at no cost to you, but we do offer it. We just, our CARES team, uh, we train them to help um, pre-qualify you, essentially. 
because we do get a lot of calls and we try our best. So that's why we go on these live shows. Maybe I can answer your question in the meantime. All righty. I wish you all the best and y'all have a great weekend. Take care.